Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Nerd Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian. Uh, Marvel TV update, Brian. Brad Winderbaum was on the Marvel podcast. He had, has some interesting things to say, Brian, about some shows that one of them we're, we're definitely not looking forward to. I don't know why it's even happening, but whatever. At first, I was a little bit interested in it, but as, as soon as I sort of read it was more about her and what she's trying to do then i was out but let's see <clears throat> and also he has some things to say about brian the eyes of wakanda brian which you seem to have um some excitement for and i read the article uh, describing some of the things that they're looking to do with that show and it also has me a little bit interested as well brian so let's talk about that brad win the ball so Episode two of the Marvel podcast. He's on there talking about different things. He obviously is the head of Marvel television, its own division now. But he was on talking about the calendar because I think September 18th, I want to say, is the premiere date for um, Agatha. Here's his quote. And then I got some quotes from the cast as well. Mm -hmm. Agatha is really fun, but it's really scary. And it gets quite dramatic. She's an amazing anti-hero. It lures you in with the fun of Halloween. And before you know it, you're crying. It's a Marvel brand of scary. I think that's the most interesting part there. It's a Halloween show. There are deadly stakes in the series. It's a fun ride, but it's a dangerous one. Now, I think I'll throw it back to you here. You brought up the idea of Marvel horror in, con in the context of the rumored Ryan Gosling for Ghost Rider. I think that's interesting in the, that he says Marvel brand of scary, which kind of suggests to me like that's their version of horror. So I guess we're going to see if their version of horror in this show at all lines up with your vision for what horror could look like in the context of Ghost Rider, Midnight Suns, and Blade, and so forth. Mm -hmm. I would imagine, Brian, that it would. Uh, because you want to... I mean, Agatha could explore this horror that they're trying to do and make it scary and make it something not necessarily like... Um, what's that show that's very popular? Horror is a horror show. It's an anthology. American Horror Story? Yeah. The one, yeah, that's the one they refresh every season with like famous people and yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> Not necessarily in that vein, but in terms of Brian, interesting storytelling that revolves around this horror theme that they're trying to sort of pull off. Whether it translates into the Ghost Rider, I would think it would. Uh, I, although I don't know how well they'll pull that off, but all I know is, Brian, that they that's the route that it needs to go. I agree. Marvel brand of scary actually scares me a little bit. <laughs> Got to be honest. And I'm not sure what it means quite yet, but it, that, it is something about the way he, he phrased that that made it feel light, more lighthearted than, say, even Werewolf by Night, which I would argue mm -hmm. did get into sort of more of a classic horror, like a 1930s horror, not, not yeah. modern horror. It, it just feels like it's going to be have what they think are some you know jumpy moments or scare moments but i, I don't think it's going to be so dark that it's in their mind inaccessible to families and i think the case you're making for like ghost rider or something is that you almost have to make it true r like you have to make it so dark that it's almost a, a truly adult production um and i'm just not convinced they're doing that with this with this show now got some quotes from the cast it was last in the article that, on deadline but i have to put this one first given mm -hmm. my my running theme here Catherine Hahn stressed there would be minimal CGI. Quote, <laughs> there is very little that is not practical magic, which is our magic. That was very thrilling. The sets were incredible, and it was like a practical, just felt delicious. It was a very immersive experience, end quote. Mouse again to Pablo. There it is. <laughs> a show about witches, a show about supernatural spells has no CGI. That's what they want. They must, they, I think probably you got to see the credits to see who's uh, who's uh, uh, um, in the 
the cruelest uh, consultants and stuff like that, David Blaine or who, 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 who are the angel Chris Angel, you know what I'm saying? Copperfield is like, who do they have doing some of this stuff? Because if you're not using, I don't know. Let's see, Brian. Let's see. Because it doesn't make, I don't know how they're going to make this work. I'm just pointing out though. So now you've had, if we look at the Marvel calendar, the lead of the next TV show in Agatha, <laughs> the lead of the next movie after Deadpool and Wolverine, which is supposed to be Brave New World, and the lead of the movie after that in Thunderbolts, all telling you what? Oh, it's practical. Oh, it's practical. There's not a lot of CGI after Marvel CGI has been just savaged by critics and fans for the past two years. I'm... If you think that's a coincidence, yeah. Yeah, Masaganda <laughs> at his best. Yeah. So the other thing about this, it's when I listen to the quotes from the cast, and even when I hear it a little bit in Windabomb, where he's kind of trying to sell you on this dichotomy of it's really fun, but it's really scary. Like it'll make you cry, but the, the stakes are really... There's uh, definitely a bit of silly in here. So they asked Catherine. So Catherine Hans quote, we can say that the coven is strong. We can say that it is hilarious and it's deep. I mean, scary, hilarious. I don't know. Patty Lapone, who's one of the co-stars added. And I think I have to think she said this as a joke, but I'm not sure. She said, quote, it's a musical. Although I guess Agatha did sing that song right originally in, in WandaVision. So she says it's a musical that looks like a hundred million dollar movie. I have no idea what we're talking about right now, Brian. <laughs> I, exactly. I'm like, does any of does any of this make you feel like on September 18th you have to be there, or if you don't have Disney Plus, you have to get it to see this show? They're gonna be relying on word of mouth because there's no way that I'm looking forward to seeing this show until it's out and let's see. I mean, the promotion right. itself makes it seem like the show doesn't know what it wants to be. Yeah. Or they don't know what show they were. Like even, <laughs> even Echo, which they obviously just chopped up into a million pieces and compressed it down to five episodes. I think they got to a place where they're like, we don't love what we have, but we know the tact we want to try and take with it to promote it, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why they were like, hey, we're gonna dump five episodes, try to sell you that it's a hard action series and try to get you on board with that. It, these are all over the place. Like, I, I don't know what this is supposed to be or what this is, but none of it is really catching my attention as like a must watch for the fall. And it's like, this is gonna be up against the penguin? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian. <clears throat> Eyes of Wakanda, Brian. Yes. You're, 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 I, I mean, I, I read the article and it's, you know, Ryan Coogler is executive producing this, Brian? Producing, not just executive. He's, okay, he's yeah. producing this film, I mean, this show, this animated show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's looking to explore and reveal a lot of connectivity in the MCU history and characters, yep. Brian. Your thoughts on where they're trying, what they're trying to do here. Yeah, I thought Windabomb, well, first off, again, so the podcast, as of now, the first two episodes were Wednesdays every other week. So they've come out two weeks apart on Wednesdays. So the next one would be July. Oh, no, I take it back every week. Sorry, June 26th, July 3rd. Next one would be July 10th. So we'll see if they keep that. But I thought Windabomb sounded genuinely excited about this. And I thought these quotes at least got me a little bit intrigued so he said the show basically ties directly into the existing mcu more than what if or x-men or spider-man or some of the other animated stuff they're working on and the quote is the action is insane he stressed that by the way so the quote doesn't really capture it he pauses to basically be like the action is crazy it's insane like he stresses that. And the storytelling is fantastic. It's both about the history of Wakanda, but also expands into the greater MCU at different time periods. If you're a fan of the movies, I think this show is going to be a real treat. End quote. That got me interested because of where Marvel Animation seems to be heading. And we've gotten really good action, I would argue, with what we already have. 
and now he's saying this show in theory is pushing the bounds of that. That has me interested more so than before. Yes, I agree. I agree. There's a lot of curiosity also built into that as well, based on um, of what they're trying to explore, what sort of uh, pathways towards the grander MCU and the things that perhaps will clarify certain things. I don't know, Brian. But let's see what this uh, <clears throat> eyes of Wakanda have to offer, because certainly an animated division of Marvel has done a fantastic job in giving us some visually incredible shows and some great storytelling, Brian, especially with the X-Men 97. So. Now, the other thing I would add is it does seem like the people behind the scenes might be a little different for this show than X-Men 97 and and what if and what I mean by that is Ryan Coogler, if you read the, if you read the book, the MC, Rise of the MCU, he generally has been given re free reign to hire who he wants into those sort of behind camera, behind the scenes roles, more so than other Marvel directors have. It sounds like that's true on this show as well. It sounds like they might the animation they're doing might be using a different company and like a slightly different style than we've seen. And it, I'm assuming that's his choice to do that. That could be good. That could be bad. Because obviously we like where the animation has generally been going in terms of visuals. But it is interesting. That is They're one pointing... thing that scares me, Brian. Yeah, but it's like they're taking more of a swing in terms of how this might look, and it might look a little distinct from what you've already seen. And so I must, I am imply, I'm inferring that that is because Kugler has a vision for how he wants his animation to look versus, say, what the the shows we've already got look. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is a concerning thing. Well, that's the if it ain't broke, why fix it? I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. you know, we've seen two shows that have done a really nice job visually. Um, I don't know that they needed to reinvent it, but that's part of the pitch, I guess, is that it will look a little bit different. So we'll see. Let's see if people will like different. I know people like better. Yeah. Different. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I, I mean, I like the concept. I like the yeah. concept that they're, they're not making this standalone, that they're not making it isolated, <laughs> that they're trying to find the tie ins, use historical. Um, and yeah, I actually think, look, I mean, there's been, I think in both Black Panther movies, there's been some really good action, like in live action. So the idea that they're, you know, going to make this like a high octane, you know, lots of action series that, that I think has me <clears throat> a little more intrigued than when we did our first roundup of sort of Marvel TV. Yeah, man. Uh, Mouse again, is certainly making things interesting, Brian, <laughs> in terms of the information that we consume and whether we choose. I mean, again, this is Marvel podcast. I don't expect them to say anything that would concern us. Although this different bit in terms of animation certainly does for mm -hmm. me. Uh, let's see is all I, I tend to say. think it's more. I tend to think it's more. You just focus on who's making the show. Right now that Marvel has moved to a more traditional model of having a show, a real showrunner, a real producer, yeah, a real yeah, writer, yeah, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. keep your eyes on who's doing it. And if, and if he's, if Winterbarm is saying basically Ryan Coogler is sort of not directing, but he's at the controls of how this is being yeah. put together. I mean, that has to make you feel generally confident that it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of, uh, have you been listening to the Marvel podcast and have you been picking up on some of these things, these details that these guys be, uh, these guys talk about, uh, Agatha Harkness, Harkness, what, well, Agatha, what is Agatha? What Agatha all along, which obviously was the chorus of the song. That's the name of the show, revealed. right? Yeah, that is the final name of the show, as far as okay. we know, after they changed it like six times. It's like, what? But I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Let's see what their form of scary looks like. Because that's the, I guess, the hook for them. Uh, I think the intrigue for many, if they're able to do that. Right. Hilarious and scary musical. I mean, what is <laughs> What is that like, Little Shop of Horrors? What Rocky Horror Picture Show? Like, what what are we talking about? Here? <laughs> like, I know, right? It's like <laughs> put these guys in the same room and have them get on the same page as to what they they because again, 
who knows if they were even in the same room if they were filmed when they were filming you know <laughs> uh and eyes of wakanda sounds interesting my again my concern is what different cgi or different animation looks like to ryan kugler and what he's trying to do because they've been doing an amazing job thus far and the storytelling has been the i guess the the, the key thing in, in all this brian never mind too much the, the the animation the animation has been fine but it's the stories that they tell that has been the difference in in, uh, in people coming back and seeing and wanting to see more so yeah we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report the show goes on yeah!